Let us close our eyes as I pray. Father God, I pray even this afternoon as I thank you for your goodness and your mercy and your power that you are a good God and that you have got a plan even for our lives. Father, we thank you for this message that you have given us in this place. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to say a very brief message which is entitled, Walking with God in the Last Days. Walking with God in the Last Days. We are living in the last days. Hallelujah. I don't think there are many people among us who can argue with the fact that we are living in the last days. Hallelujah. There are very few people who can argue with the fact that we are living in the last days. Not in the first days. Not in some days, but in the last days. Hallelujah. Let us go to Genesis chapter 5. I'm going to read a few verses of scripture to assist us to contextualize what we are learning. Whilst we are still open in the verses of scripture, I would like to also take this opportunity to thank, for, to thank, to thank all those who participated at the wedding which was there last week. Hallelujah between Mr. and Mrs. in love. Hallelujah. We, we had a very lovely wedding at Oak Fountain there. Hallelujah. How many were present? If you were present, just lift up your hand. If you were present. Some people who were present at the wedding, they are not present in church. Hallelujah. So we thank God for those who were present at the wedding. It was a very lovely wedding. It rained in the afternoon. At around this time, it started raining. But uh, we had a very beautiful garden wedding. And then in the afternoon, we were in the wall, and we enjoyed ourselves by the grace of God. Hallelujah. So we believe that many more weddings are coming this year. Hallelujah. We are actually praying for those who are just staying together without, uh, I mean, a marriage. For, for them to be given grace by God, to actually wait, hallelujah, so that they are properly constituted in marriage, hallelujah. How many people know that a wedding, or yes, a wedding, is actually the plan of God for humanity, a wedding? How many, it seems many people don't know, kutu mchato, luthelo lukankulunkulu for abantu. Now, to just lift up your hand. If you know that a wedding is God's plan for humanity, it is God's plan for humanity. That's why I waited myself. If it was not part of God's plan, I would have just ignored it. Hallelujah. So, if you desire to wait, you are going to wait in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. You are going to wait in the name of Jesus Christ. It doesn't matter how many demons have risen from your mother's side or your father's side. By the special grace of God, you are going to wait in the name of Jesus Christ. If you waited in the past, you are going to have a wedding anniversary in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because the first miracle that Jesus Christ performed, he performed it at a wedding, according to John chapter 2. At a wedding in Cana, there is a reason why, it, why Jesus Christ didn't perform the first miracle in a funeral. He could have just gone to a funeral and performed the first miracle at a funeral. But he performed the first miracle at a wedding in Cana. There is a reason why he did that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He was, you know, he was showing, he was demonstrating that he came to revive families. He came not only to save the lost, but also to revive broken families. Also to give life to broken families. Hallelujah. So Jesus Christ is coming for your own family. If you want to build your own family, Jesus Christ is coming for your own family. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I believe so much in families because 
When I grew up, I grew up in a broken home. Actually, I was raised by relatives. Hallelujah. So I know the value of the family. Because I, I used to wonder why other people had families, but uh, I was growing up being raised by relatives. I'm not saying it is wrong to be raised by relatives, but it is actually better to be raised by your father and your mother. Hallelujah. So, you know, I, I, I grew to appreciate the importance of a father and a mother in a person's life. As I was growing up, I had a lot of questions which I couldn't ask the relatives that were raising me because they didn't have the capacity to answer my questions. Hallelujah. Well, they didn't have the answers to my questions. But uh, we glorify God that God is raising families in this place. He is bringing families, strong families. And God is not going to allow the devil in this fellowship to destroy families. How many people agree with that? Hallelujah. We won't allow the devil to destroy families. I want you to confess and say, I won't allow the devil to destroy families. Say the devil will not use me to destroy families. Because the devil can use you to destroy families. He can ask you to have a relationship with one person in a marriage and then the family will be destroyed. He can ask you or he can cause you to to actually gossip people in a family until the family crumbles. I want you to confess once more and say, instead of destroying families, I am going to build the families. Say, I am a family builder in the mighty name of Jesus. Say, I am a family builder in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 God is going to use this church fellowship to restore families. Hallelujah. This church fellowship is going to be used by Jesus Christ of Nazareth to restore families. Hallelujah. I want you to lift up your hand and say my family is being restored. If you have got a husband or a wife that is cheating you, even without knowing you, I mean without knowing, without you knowing that you are being cheated, I want you to pray and say, by the special grace of God, I won't be cheated in the name of Jesus. Because the Holy Spirit is revealing every hidden thing. Let's hope I am Hallelujah. 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 I can the footing is with Gulam to you know, Chaluvan. Spiritual. I want you to say, I won't be cheated. In Jesus' mighty name. Because the Holy Spirit is revealing every hidden thing in my life. And in the lives of those who are around me. Say the Holy Spirit is revealing every hidden thing. In my life. And in the lives of those who are around me. In Jesus mighty name. Hallelujah. So things are being revealed. In your life and in the lives of those who are around you. I want you to take a few minutes because the spirit of revelation is coming. Everything which is hidden around your life is being revealed right now. I want you to pray. Just 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 to pray and thank God for the spirit of revelation. 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 Father, we thank you for the spirit of revelation. We thank you, Lord, for the spirit of revelation. We thank you, Jesus, for the spirit of revelation, which is revealing every hidden thing 
In the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So the spirit of revelation is coming. So if your spouse is cheating you, or if your boyfriend or your girlfriend is cheating you, God is going to reveal that. Hallelujah. You are going to have a testimony. Your testimony will be a testimony which is a, an angering testimony. If you are being cheated, it is going to be revealed in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. If you have been suspecting that you are being cheated and you are actually being cheated, by the Spirit of God this afternoon, revelations are coming. Hallelujah. If you were cheating someone, you are going to be exposed by the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. If you are cheating someone, you are going to, unless you repent before you are exposed, unless you repent, you are going to be exposed by the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. I want you to say, oh, Holy Spirit, may you search me and reveal what is hidden within me. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. 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 I want you to say, oh Holy Spirit, may you uproot from within me any tendency to flirt with those of the opposite sex. Say, oh Holy Spirit, may you uproot from within me any tendency to flirt with those of the opposite sex. Was some are not in a relationship with those of the opposite sex, but they are busy flirting. Hallelujah. And the devil is busy using that to hinder your breakthroughs. Hallelujah. I declare that flirting will not hinder your breakthroughs in the name of Jesus. I want you to say flirting will not hinder my breakthroughs in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Say flirting will not hinder my breakthroughs in the name of Jesus. If flirting is not a good thing, it is not a good thing. a person of the opposite gender or sex. You have a relationship which is like a friendship, which is like a relationship, like an affair. Unga kanyo mbenle atanda ana kumbeni wungane, but you operate unga nta hii relationship ele abstinence bagat. Hallelujah. 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 That's what we mean by flirting. It can hinder a lot of blessings. Some people who are attacked by spiritual wives and spiritual husbands, They've got that problem as well. It, I, I'm saying it from experience. Some people, who, I'm not saying everyone who has got a problem of a spiritual wife or a spiritual husband has got a problem of flirting, but more than half of the people, according to my experience, we have got a problem of being attacked by sexual dreams. They've got a challenge with flirting as well. They don't know where to draw boundaries and they are relating to people of the opposite sex. Hallelujah. They, they just befriend people and then they will be chatting with people up to around 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock, I mean in the morning. Hallelujah. In those so-called unholy hours, you know the so-called unholy hours when people be doing witchcraft, thieves will be stealing, a person will be busy on the phone. You, you think a person is fast asleep and the, you can call them and they can pretend to be fast asleep when they are busy on the phone and they are chatting with a person of the opposite sex and then they'll be saying good night, good night for the next 20 to 40 minutes. All of that we are uprooting it in the name of Jesus Christ. Because it is a hindrance to your breakthroughs. I'm helping someone. Hallelujah. Say he is assisting someone. Because it's not my message, but he, I, I'm aware of the direction that I'm taking. Say he is assisting someone. Say he is assisting someone. 
You know, I once listened to a testimony of a certain young girl that was delivered of marine spirits in South Africa at a certain church in Venderland. She was relating that she used to flirt even with men who were almost 50 years old. A girl that was at, a, I think she was doing grade 12, grade 11, grade 12. A young girl. She was saying she would flirt. I don't know how they would do it. In South Africa, I think you can buy data bundles. And then if you want to chat with new people, you can just SMS a certain number. It would be maybe a five-digit or a six-digit number. And then you start to connect with people who are on the pro who will be doing the same thing. And then she was saying she, she was so bound with this spirit of chatting that uh, she would be chatting even during lessons. She would sit at the back during lessons. She would be chatting under the desk. And she would go to the toilet and the, during break time or when she's in the toilet, she'll be busy chatting. And then when maybe others are eating, instead of uh, eating, she'll be busy chatting. She, she was so bound. By the time she came to that fellowship, she was so bound with the spirit of chatting. I declare that the spirit of chatting is not going to hinder your breakthrough in the name of Jesus. There are some people... Maybe we have got a, we are under that kind of bondage. The spirit of chatting. They can't stop chatting. Hallelujah. They can't stop chatting maybe on Facebook or WhatsApp. They'll be just chatting. They may not be able to find money to buy a Bible or to buy other useful things in their lives. But they will always find a time to chat. The devil makes sure that they always find a time to chat. I declare in the name of Jesus Christ that from now onwards, by the unction of the Holy Spirit, you will be in a position to screen whether to chat with certain people or not to chat with them. Well, some people that you may be chatting with, they may be destiny killers and destiny thieves. Hallelujah. They are destiny killers. They are people whom when you meet, your destiny just dies. Hallelujah. Because we are living in the last days, it's not everyone that you meet that, is, that has come to promote your testing. Some people that you meet, they've been sent by the enemy to steal your testing or to destroy your testing. I want you to say, my testing will not be stolen by chatting. Say, my testing will not be stolen by chatting. In the name of Jesus. You know, when I'm talking about this chatting business, I remember a certain story of a certain lady that was delivered in a certain church. This lady, you know, befriended a, a certain man, I will say a certain man in courts on Facebook. And then they started to communicate with that man on Facebook. She was single. Someone that was looking for a partner to be married. So after be, be, befriending this man, they started exchanging photos. You know, they would exchange even their experiences over the weekend, their experiences over the holidays. With the passage of time, these people, they fell in love. Hallelujah. This lady fell in love with this man in court. Hallelujah. And then later on, after they had been in a love affair, for I think one and a half years to one year, eight months. The, the man in court said there is a secret that I want to tell you. Because they would even chat at night via Facebook and exchange romantic messages on, on Facebook. And then later on, this man in court said there is a secret that I want to reveal to you. And then the, the lady said, you can always reveal everything to me. After all, you are the only love that I have. And the man in court said, my secret is that I am not a man. I am a woman. Here is my picture. Bah, a beautiful woman. It turned out that she was in love with a, what? With a beautiful woman. Without knowing. On Facebook. Say Facebook. It's a very good tool for 
for doing business and for preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. But the devil can also use it to destroy. Hallelujah. You can use it to build your own life. But the devil can use Facebook or any other social networking site like Twitter, maybe LinkedIn and so on. Even professional networking sites. The devil can use them to destroy. I mean, if you give him the chance to destroy you. Hallelujah. So this lady protested and this lady that was a lesbian disappeared. But uh, I mean afterwards she was being attacked by the spirit of female person wanting to have an affair with her in the dream. She would just fall asleep maybe on the couch, there on the sofas. And immediately she falls asleep even among other people. She would be having sexual intercourse with a woman in the dream. She would have a dream which always attacked her. Why? Because she developed affection for one of her own, a woman, through social networking sites. I want you to declare and say, I won't be deceived into developing strange relationships through social networking sites. Say, I won't be deceived into developing strange relationships through social networking sites. Hallelujah. 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 Yes. Because you can be deceived. The devil can use people with a lot of demons to deceive you into having a strange relationship via social networking sites. But this year we are not going to be cheated by small things that the devil brings our way, in, I mean of our blessings. Say I won't be cheated of my blessings. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. So I, 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 did, I said these things because I felt I had to say them. If you are struggling in that area, just see me after the church service so that I pray for you. It's no use pretending that everything is well. When you are busy collapsing from inside. A very big tree. We thought the tree was a very strong tree. Until one day when there was just a small amount of wind, it collapsed. We discovered that that tree was rotten inside. It, it had been eaten by termites from, from within. From outside, you could not see that there was a problem on the tree. So when the devil destroys a Christian, he doesn't necessarily always destroy Christians from outside. He destroys them from within. I want you to say kukuza from Ngapagat. He was always pinching him he was always stealing from the ministry of Jesus. And the devil was gradually destroying Judas Iscariot. But Judas Iscariot didn't wake up with the thought of selling Jesus or betraying Jesus. He grew into that. I want you to say he grew into that. He grew into that. Say he grew into that. Say he grew into that. Hallelujah. 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 Say he grew into that. If you knew Solomon, Gazanga Fugel about Fazabai 1000. What can you say on Fazoy 1? What got in Tatuas 2? Where's those two Agaquana? A Tatuas 3. Where's those three Gaquana? What Tatuas 4? Where's those four Gaquana? What figure 10? Where's the good 10 and Tagagagalis? What should I do? Good twenty, good twenty, twelve, seven, and twelve. Very gagati one. What's the abamba go hundred? Who hundred? Very wise, six, seven, and twelve. And one city one. Aba first, aba zwa. Two na seven, ama hundred. Aba first, baga Solomon. I don't know good wise, seven, and twelve. I don't even want you to imagine good wise, seven, and twelve. Ngapo ay inko, singapula aba first, aba one thousand. You have to sell a forecast, Anjo. 
So the devil introduces you to evil gradually. You will be destroying you from inside. But I declare in the name of Jesus Christ that this year you are not going to be destroyed from, from any direction, from within, without. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Say I'm God protected in this season. Say I won't be destroyed from within or from without. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If, if the devil was working on a case, on your case, maybe there is a married woman or a married man who was busy chasing you or who is busy chasing you. Or maybe you to chase a service. I command fire to burn that person in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I command fire to expose that person in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 Don't worry about how the fire will work. You will hear that the fire is working. I've sent fire to that person. Especially that one that you are thinking. Hallelujah. 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 I've sent fire there. The fire of God is going to expose them. Hallelujah. Say the fire of God is going to expose them. Why are we confessing all of this? We are confessing all of this because the devil has got uh, just uh, silly, silly methods of hindering the blessings of the children of God. They can fast for seven days, but we are But we are in this season so that we can enter the highway of holiness. Say the highway of holiness. Say the highway of holiness. Say, I am in the highway of holiness. Say, I am in the highway of holiness. Say, I am in the highway of holiness. Say, I won't be hindered. Because I am in the highway of holiness. Let us read Isaiah chapter 35. Isaiah chapter 35. Verse 8. Isaiah chapter 35. Verse 8. Let me read the start. I mean, let me start from verse 5. It says, Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened, and the ears of the deaf, deaf shall be unstopped. Then the lame shall leap like a deer, and the tongue of the dumb sing. For waters shall burst forth in the wilderness, and streams in the desert. The pest ground shall become a pool, and the thirsty land springs of water. In the habitation of jackals, where each lay, there shall be grass with reeds and rushes. Number 8, or verse 8. A highway shall be there, and a road, and it shall be called the highway of holiness. Say the highway of holiness. The unclean shall not pass over it, but it shall be for others. Whoever walks on the road, although a fool, shall not go astray. When you enter the highway of holiness, even if you are a fool, and you are busy flirting with someone, you will not go astray in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. You will not go astray in the name of Jesus Christ. Because this uses very small things to hinder people. He doesn't use very big things to hinder people. He doesn't come with a very big temptation. He doesn't come and say, go, go to Mark Inn and steal two million dollars. Because he knows that you will not accept that. He, he causes you to, to accede to small things so that he can hinder your blessing. Meanwhile, the angels will be on their way with your blessings, with your answers to prayer. But the devil will use those tiny actions, those tiny behaviors in order to hinder your blessings. But because you are on the highway of holiness, I declare that you won't be hindered in the name of Jesus Christ. Say I won't be hindered. In Jesus' mighty name. So I have not even begun to preach the message. I was just obeying the prompting of the Spirit of God in my heart. 
to say with us some of the things that I've been sensing when I was praying on my own. There are things which are not related to my message, which I was sensing. In 17, you will have to use WhatsApp and Facebook or any other social networking site very careful. Because just imagine spending the whole night and receiving your blessings and the enemy using very small things like WhatsApp, like Facebook, to steal your blessings. I want you to say social networking sites or communication channels will not be used by the enemy to steal my blessings. Say my blessings will not be stolen. Say my blessings are being restored. Even right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say my blessings are being restored. In the mighty name of Jesus. So the Bible says in Isaiah chapter 35, verse 8, that there is a highway of holiness. It's not Pastor Ian Love who is saying that. It is the word of God which is saying there is a highway of holiness. So my message, now my message is very short because I'm going to finish it next week. Say he is going to finish his message next week. It is very short. If it is more than 15 minutes, it will be very long. It is very, very short. Say it is very, very short. Hallelujah. So I'm going to just say a bit. And then next week, I'm going to finish the message. Say he is going to finish the message next week. The reason why I'm not in a hurry to, to plunge into the message and try to finish it, is because, I mean, it's not actually one reason. It's actually two reasons. The first reason, there is no way, way it is written in the Bible that I should preach for an hour and detain people unnecessarily. Number one. Number two, isn't it I've got other opportunities to preach? Even if I'm not the one who is going to preach next week, still I will have another chance to finish the message. So there is no point in me preaching for three hours in order to finish points which I can finish over a longer period of time. So we want to look at working with God in the last days. Because we are living in the last days. So we want to explore just a few things for today in working with God in the last days. Let us go to Genesis chapter 5 and examine scriptures which by now we must be knowing. Verse 21. Enoch lived 65 years and begot Methuselah. After he begot Methuselah, Enoch walked with God 300 years and had sons and daughters. So all the days of Enoch were 365 years. And Enoch walked with God, and he was not for God to kill him. What we see in those verses that I've just read is a man called Enoch, one of the patriarchs. Hallelujah. One of the patriarchs born from Adam who walked with God for 300 years. He, he is the only one with the exception of Noah who is described as walking with God. In this chapter of chapter 5, Genesis chapter 5, I believe he is the only one who is described as working with God. And the Bible says he was not because God took him. I want you to declare and say in 2017, I am going to walk with God. And I won't be hindered. So how did Enoch walk with God? How did he walk with God? Let us go to Hebrews chapter 11. And I'm going to read verse 5 and verse 6. Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11. Verse 5 and verse 6. It says in verse 5, By faith, Enoch was taken away so that he did not see death and was not found because God had taken him. For before he was taken, he had this testimony that he pleased God. So we see from verse 5 that Enoch was taken because of faith. I want you to confess and say, Enoch was taken because of faith. Say, I am going to walk by faith. 
So our walk with God is a walk of faith. It is not a natural walk. We don't walk with God physically or naturally. The same way you would walk with your children or with your friend or with your enemy or with your, I mean, acquaintances from the past. Because God is not physical, he is a spirit. You walk with God by faith. So this afternoon I'm encouraging us to develop the necessary faith for us to walk with God. I want you to say God is not physical. He is a spirit. God is a spirit. And as a spirit, he is everywhere. And you cannot walk with God physically. You can only walk with God by faith. Hallelujah. I want you to say I am going to walk with God by faith. In Jesus' mighty name. Say, I'm going to walk with God by faith in Jesus' mighty name. The reason why we do that is because in Romans chapter 10, because some people may not understand how this church operates. Let us go to Romans chapter 10, verse 10. Romans chapter 10, verse 10. Romans 10, verse 10. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. The only way in which you can expropriate your salvation is when you confess what you believe in your heart. You cannot possess what the word of God has promised you unless you confess it. This is where some of us, we miss it. You read the Bible, you believe, you pray, but you don't confess what the word of God is saying in your life. But I decree in the name of Jesus Christ that from now onwards you will have the necessary faith and the anointing to pick up your necessary faith to confess the word of God and you will see the word of God coming to pass in your life. You will not just sit, I mean, around and be lazy when it comes to confessing the word of God. You will confess the word of God and the word of God is going to take you to the next level. I want you to say the word of God is taking me to the next level. I believe so much in confession myself. Why? Because I've confessed the words of God and I've seen them working in the spirit for my life. And I know that if you confess the word of God with faith in your heart, it is going to work for you in the name of Jesus Christ. Even as you are confessing the word of God, it is working for you in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As you confess the word of God, it is working for you in the name of Jesus Christ. Who else walked with God? Let us go to Genesis chapter 6. Genesis chapter 6. Verse 5. I'm going to read from verse 5 to verse 9. Genesis chapter 6. From verse 5 to verse 9. Genesis is at verse 6. We want to read about Noah. Another man walked with God in an evil and in a wicked generation. Noah lived in a generation which was like our generation, where people believed so much in doing wickedness, where people were busy imagining evil and carrying it out. Noah was walking with God during that generation. And we are encouraged by the Holy Scriptures also to walk with God in our generations. Verse 5 says, Then the Lord saw the wickedness of men. Or rather, Then the Lord saw that the wickedness of men was great in the earth, and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. 6. And the Lord was sorry that he had made men on earth, and he was grieved in his heart. Just imagine. Because of the wickedness that was on earth during the time of Noah, God arrived at a point where you are sorry that he had created human beings. I want you to reflect. When God is looking at you, how does he feel? 
I want you to ask yourself a rhetoric question. You are the one who is going to answer it from now onwards through your behavior and your actions. I want you to say when God is looking at me, how does he feel? Ask the question one, two more times. Say when God is looking at me, how does he feel? Say when God is looking at me, how does he feel? Because when I, as your pastor, I'm looking at you, I may feel happy because I don't know what is going on in your life. But God can not be deceived like a pastor or a prophet or whatever, or a bishop or whatever. God can't be deceived. So I'm quite out, out in the name of Jesus, out, out. They will obey the name of Jesus. That's why who cast a It's not a proof you who is in right standing with God. It only proves two things in our culture. It proves the faith in the name of Jesus. And that the name of Jesus Christ is working for you. And then the second thing, which is proven. When you speak the name of Jesus and demons are scaring for cover and they are running away, is that demons are afraid of the name of Jesus. One, it proves that you have got faith in the name of Jesus. And because you have got faith in the name of Jesus, it is working for you. The second thing which it is proving is that the name of Jesus Christ has got so much power, so much dynamic power of fire, that demons are afraid of the name of Jesus. It won't be proving that you are in right standing with God. Hallelujah. Our standing in with God is something which you have to work on on a daily basis. Hallelujah. Our standing with God, as we walk with God, it's something which we need to work on on a daily basis. And you should not be afraid of human beings. Because some people, they start to behave right when they know that certain human beings are around them. Now, if you start to behave right because a certain human being is in your vicinity or is near you, I mean, it means you don't even understand what Christianity is all about. Because Christianity is more of a relationship with God than a relationship with other people. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's why now the Bible encourages us. In Philippians chapter, I, I've not yet finished. Let me, or, let me finish. In Genesis there, and then I'm going to go to Philippians chapter 2, verse 12. So that you can understand, I'm going to read from verse 12 up to verse 16 in Philippians. But let us finish off what I, I was reading in Genesis there. And the Lord was sorry, I'm reading from verse 6, the verse that I read. And the Lord was sorry that he had made men on the earth, and he was grieved in his heart. So the Lord said, I will destroy men whom I have created from the face of the earth, both men and beast, creeping thing and birds of the air. For I am sorry that I have made them. Just imagine what was confessing to himself that I'm going to destroy them because I am sorry that I created them. I am sorry that I made them. I, I don't know of any other portion of scripture where God was sorry about something. <coughs> Maybe you think you are the only one who has ever been sore about something. Every time I am sore. Even when I am I don't know whether he is still doing that. Hallelujah. He is a booze after the church service. He is a man who is a man who is a man Hallelujah. 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 So, 
the, the reason why I remember that is because God said, I am sorry that I made them. Just imagine when God is looking at you or when God is looking at me, at, I am sorry that I made Ian. Immediately after saying that, just imagine what will happen. Because God is the creator and the sustainer of the creation. He is not only the creator, he is also the sustainer of the creation. Imagine if God were to say, I am sorry that I made Ian. Nengai wuti ngilobu sozi, into nchala ngizi imagina, ifi ngingetwa, ifi ngilo nko siga zi nchala ngimachinu wubi kupela ngimachinu zboz. And then God says, I am sorry that I made him. Immediately after God has said that you will be, you will just collapse or you will die. A calamity will okay. Just imagine God is the one who created everything. And then he says in his heart, I am sorry that I made him. In other words, he will be saying, I am offended in my heart that I made him and he exists on my earth. That's what he said about the generation of human beings that were alive during the time of Noah. And that is what he is saying about our generation. We are one of the most privileged generations of human beings. Because to preach, we are not using our voices like what Jesus Christ used to do during his time. We are using microphones. To move from one place to another, we are flying using aeroplanes. But now instead of us thanking God for all of those blessings, we are actually sinning even more than other generations. Hallelujah. This is the time I was reading on the internet. I was reading about uh, cyber sex, phone sex. I don't know how that kind of sex occurs. But uh, it's the imagination of human being, which is evil, continued. That they won't be satisfied with the physical sex. They go on to phone sex, uh, uh, to cyber sex, and so on. That's wickedness which is there on earth. But as those who are working with God even in this season, we must make sure that by the spirit of God and by the word of God, we avoid every form of evil which is taking place around us. Because the Bible then says something about Noah. That Noah was different. He was in right standing with God. Hallelujah. Noah was in right standing with God. Hallelujah. Say no, I was in right standing with God. Because in verse 6, the Bible says, And the Lord was sorry that he had made men on the earth, and he was grieved in his heart. He was not only sorry, but he was grieved in his heart. What did he find in his heart? He was grieved in his heart. The Bible says he didn't end at being sorry. He transcended to grief. He, his sorry, his sorriness, if there is such a word, his sorriness, if there is such a word, I can coin it, if it is not there. His sorriness, it transcended to grief. It became grief. Genesis chapter 6, verse 6. Why says Saul out Jehovah? Who would to even see the Abantuem Shaven? What tabuga and Siswenia? Here we are talking about God. Just imagine. The Bible says, What tabuga and sizweniak. We are not zelelu tunkulunkulu ulama feelings. He has got emotions. Do you realize? I want you to say the God that I serve. He has got emotions. Ulama feelings, even though he is spirit. Ulama feelings. He can be sorry, number one. Number two, he can be grieved. He has got feelings. So when God is looking at me in 2017, between January 1 and December 31, how is he going to feel in between? Is he going to feel sore until he is grieved at my ways because they are crooked before his sight? Or he is going to feel happy? He is going to be pleased? Because the Bible talked of Enoch. We, we read about Enoch in Genesis chapter 5, verse 21 to 24. And in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 5 and verse 6, that Enoch pleased God. The Bible says before he was taken here to this testimony, that he pleased God. In other words, when God was looking at Enoch, he was pleased with Enoch. 
He was not grieved with Enoch. Why? Because Enoch was walking with God. Hallelujah. That's why in this season, God has given us a theme as a fellowship that it is a year of working with God. Because when you walk with God like Enoch, you are going to please God. It means you will be living by faith. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It means you will be living by faith. But if you decide not to walk with God and you start to work the works of the flesh, you are going to make God sorry in heaven when he is looking at you. And you are going to cause God to be grieved when he is looking at you. I want you to say, oh God, may you give me the grace and the inner strength not to make you sorry, not to grieve you by my actions and by my choices. I declare that God has given you that grace and that there is none among us who is going to grieve God. Just imagine if you are praying and you are asking for a job, but God is grieved at you. Just imagine. We are tandas. Hey, nkulunkulu, nkulu, 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 tandas, uzu, pupu, dlama, kweb. Ngapu, nkulu, nkulu, grieved, eh, zuluin, at your ways. Will he answer that prayer? He won't answer that prayer. How do I know that? Let us go to Psalm chapter 66. Psalm chapter 66, verse 18. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear. That's why I was making us do those confessions that we won't flirt with anyone. We won't have strange relationships through social networking sites. Because... When you start to develop such useless relationships, you will, be require, you will be regarding iniquity in your heart. When you regard iniquity in your heart, you hinder the blessing of God. You hinder your prayers from being answered by God. Hallelujah. The Bible says, Psalm chapter 66 verse 18, If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear. If you regard iniquity in your heart, God does not listen to your prayer. Ya we kangeli so nukuta susi so nanjo. Akukatalegi nukutu ngumfundisi. Ngumfangeli. Ngumzalwane. We intercess. It doesn't matter who you are. And what position you occupy. You may be a prophet. But if you regard iniquity in your heart. The Lord will not hear. Say the Lord will not hear. Just imagine, this person has not even done evil. They are, they are planning to do evil. They are planning to go to maybe another suburb so that they can sleep with someone out of wedlock. They are busy planning. They are busy planning. And then all of a sudden they think of praying and the Lord is not hearing their prayer because they are regarding iniquity in their heart. Just imagine. This person, just because they don't want to delete the number of this person whom they are always chatting with, but the person is occupied. Instead of the man or the woman chatting with their spouse, they are now chatting with you until the wee hours of the morning. Not the week. The wee hours of the morning. They are, they are called the wee. It's a strange word. W-E-E. -E. The wee hours of the morning. You are chatting with someone of the opposite sex who ordinarily is married. And because you are regarding iniquity in your heart, God is not hearing your prayers. But I declare in the name of Jesus Christ that that evil has been uprooted from our hearts. And that there is no one who is cherishing evil and wickedness in their heart. Hallelujah. And that God is going to answer our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ. Say my prayers are being answered in the name of Jesus Christ. Say thank you Lord Jesus for answering my prayers. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we learn that God became sorry during the time of Noah. 
he became sorry because of people who were doing evil during the time of Noah. People who were doing wickedness. Hallelujah. 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 I want to read something from John chapter 9. Let us go to John chapter 9. As I conclude the first part of this message, walking with God in the last days. Say 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 walking with God in the last days. I want to read the when Jesus Christ had healed a man who was blind from his birth in John chapter 9. It's a very long story. You are going to read the whole story on your own. But the Pharisees, they started to say Jesus Christ is a sinner. Let us read verse 16. Therefore, some of the Pharisees said, This man is not from God because he does not keep the Sabbath. Others said, How can a man who is a sinner do such signs? And there was a division among them. They said to the blind man again, what do you say about him because he opened your eyes? You said he is a prophet. This was the confession of the blind man because of the works that Jesus Christ had done in his life. And then I want to skip quite a number of verses because of our time constraints and go to verse 30. It says, the man answered and said to them, Why? This is a marvelous thing, that you do not know where he is from, yet he has opened my eyes. Now we know, say now we know, that God does not hear sinners. But if anyone is a worshiper of God and does his will, he hears him. Do you realize, if you are a sinner, God does not hear sinners. I'm not the one who is saying that. It is written in the Bible. Let me read it once more. Now we know that God does not hear sinners. But if anyone is a worshiper of God and does his will, he hears him. So for you to be heard by God, it means you must abandon sin. Hallelujah. For God to hear me, it means I must die more and more to sin and live more and more to Christ. In this season, 2017, God is going to answer those who die more and more to sin and live more and more to Jesus Christ of Nazareth. As long as you are sinning, it's not going to happen. It's not going to but they hate the iniquity in their hearts and God decided to kill them in the church service. Some were being healed during the church service and Ananias and Sapphira, they died during a church service. Just imagine, during a church service where signs and wonders were taking place, these people were destroyed by the anointing of the Holy Spirit because they, they decided to regard iniquity in their hearts. So in 2017, as we are working with God, we are not going to regard iniquities in our heart. Let us conclude with Philippians. Philippians chapter 2. I'm concluding now. Philippians chapter 2. Say he is concluding. Just tell your neighbor he is concluding. Hallelujah. I'm now concluding. I'm finishing. Say he is finishing. 
Hallelujah. I'm going to read from verse 12 to verse 16. Hallelujah. It says in verse 12, Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now, much more in my absence, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. I want you to say I'm going to work out my salvation with fear and trembling. Why? Because we are living in the last days. For it is God who works in you both to will and to do for his good pleasure. Do all things without complaining and disputing that you may become, blame, that you may become blameless and harmless. Children of God without fault in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation among whom you shine as lights in the world. Holding fast the word of life so that I may rejoice in the day of Christ, that I have not run in vain or leopard in vain. Let us stand in the presence of God. I want you to declare and say, I am going to work out my salvation with fear and trembling. Say, I'm going to work out my salvation. <laughs> 